Hello everyone and welcome back to the series where I talk about some trivia on the Japanese culture or language and some nuances that were lost in the translation from the Japanese audio to the English subtitles of an anime. In this case, for the 8th episode of Onimai. Right at the start of this episode, after the opening, Mahilo starts with a bang with a lot of complex expressions to express his feeling about reaching winter break. At first, he uses two expressions back to back that are called Yoji Jukugo, a type of expression really popular in the Japanese language that are always made out of four characters. Let's start with the first one, Gashin Shotan, to express persevering through hardships to reach your goal. If you take each character in their literal sense, it comes down to bend over, firewood, lick and gallbladder, which probably makes you wonder where this is coming from. Well, the expression comes from a Chinese book of general history called 18 Histories in Brief that was written during the Yuan Dynasty. It's from an historical event that happened in the spring and autumn Chinese period, where the King Koryu of the region of Wu died in a battle against the King Kosin of Yue. The son of Koryu decided to seek vengeance for the death of his father, and to reinforce his resolve, he decided to start sleeping on some hard firewood to use the pain to make sure to not forget his resolution. Three years later, he finally succeeded in defeating Kosin, who felt immense shame of his lust. And to try to distract himself from his shame, Kosin went inside his room to lick the very bitter gallbladder of a bear. And that's why this expression is used to convey the feeling of enduring something hard to do in order to reach your goal. Completely random bonus for anyone that likes VTubers. Kanata from Hololive used that exact expression last month when trying to come up with hard to read expressions to test one of her fellow comrades, Miko, which didn't succeed to read it with her hilly Japanese. I'll leave some links to the original streams and some clips of that in the description for those interested. The following expression, Kanan Shinku, that was translated into trials and tribulations, is something often used in Buddhism to talk about facing some troubling hardships. It's composed of two pairs of what is called Ryugo in Japanese. They are quasi-synonyms, words that have a similar meaning but are not quite the same and are grouped together to reinforce the meaning that they give. The first two are often representing something difficult, hard to accomplish, with the first one having a nuance a bit more into the emotional side of something that causes worry or anguish. The second pair is about something emotionally painful and that causes suffering. Finally, what Mahiro uses to describe the winter break as the paradise destination after all that hard work is with Togenkyo, which is written with Peach, Source and Village. It's a term in reference of Shangri-La, a earthly paradise described in the tale of the Peach Blossom Spring. It's a Chinese fable by Tao Yuanming from the year 421 about finding a hidden utopian village. It tells the story of a fisherman following a river and discovering a forest made up entirely of peach trees with the ground covered in peach petals. Once he reached the source of the river, he found a small opening that opened up to an impressive village where everyone was always happy. After a while, the fisherman decided to leave to go back home while leaving markers on his path to be able to find the village again but it was never to be found again. In the bad scene with Mio, Asahi and Momiji, Mio described the situation she was in with Hadino Mushiro that was translated into My Worst Nightmare. The literal translation is of a woven mat of needles, a situation where you can't even feel a little bit relaxed. In this episode, Mihari described Mahilo with Jinchikumugai, to express that she thinks that he's harmless, 
This is another Yoji Chukugo expression, and it's pretty simple. Human, livestock, none, harm. Someone who is harmless to either humans or animals. When Asahi finished telling the story of the pillow flipper, Mio described it as Yaku Monogatari, which was translated into just a spooky campfire story. The literal sense is of 100 tales or stories. It is referring to an old parlor game that goes back to the Edo period, where you will gather peoples to a place with at least two or three rooms, and in the furthest room from the main room, you'd put a hundred lanterns called Andon and one mirror on top of a table. After the preparation, everyone will go back to the main room, where, one by one, people will tell a short, scary story, and when they were done, they will go to the lantern room to extinguish one of them, look into the mirror, and return back to the main room. The group will continue doing that, with the room getting progressively darker and darker, and the goal was to try to reach a hundred stories stone without everyone giving up. This next part is gonna be a new one, where I talk a bit about the person that drew the end card illustration. It was the first time that I really took a moment to do research on the artist, and I was really glad to have looked it up, so I thought that other people could also be interested in knowing more about it. This episode's end card was drawn by Sato Toshiyuki, a key animator that worked in a lot of animes over the past two decades. He's also working directly on Onimai, and is credited for the Space Titanic segment of the third episode, as the animation director for episode 4 and 8, and also as the key animator for this episode, which could explain the different feel of this episode's animation. There's too many things that he worked on that I could mention, but to mention some recent ones, he was key animator for Chainsaw Man on episode 4, 7, and 11, and he is the one that animated the infamous scene between Himeno and Denji in the bar scene. He worked on a bunch of Mob Psycho and One Punch Man scenes, Cyberpunk Edge Runners, Osama Rankings, Jujutsu Kaisen, Konosuba, Mushoku Tensei, and so much more. I'll also leave some showcase videos in the description for those interested in seeing more of his work. That's all I had for this episode, and you know what to do if you want me to continue covering this anime.